This was a class act from Ross Johnston. Midway through the first of the Ducks vs. Capitals game, big hits were laid on both sides, leading to a fight, and Edmondson falls through the open door on the Caps bench, and Johnston shows class, doesn't jump on him, and start punching him. He lets him get up with a little hand gesture to say, come on, come on, waits for him to get ready, and the boys start throwing hands. I'll give the edge to Ross Boss in my biased eyes, but it was a spirited bout on both sides. This just shows the code enforcers have. There's an etiquette to it. There is. There really is. One of the reasons hockey is the best sport in the world. Guys will be punching and fighting one second, but will be carrying and shaking hands the next. Scrappy, yet classy. Also, Nick Dowd telling the refs to get out of the way and let them go was funny. As a Ducks fan, this was pretty much the highlight of the night, outside of a master class of saves from John Gibson, per usual, stopping 26 out of 27 shots, who was also playing in back-to-back games, by the way. For Caps fans, their highlight would come with 40 seconds left in the first as Ethan Bear gets his first goal in 366 days, his first as a capital off a rebound during 4-on-4. Gibson almost saves that. After that, it was a boring low-shot affair. Neither team generated many high-danger chances. The Caps would get the empty netter to ice the game from Tom Wilson, and Darcy Kemper gives the Ovi list Caps their first shutout of the season. Yeah, this game also didn't have Ovi in it. Lame. Again, the Ducks play fine 5-on-5. Five five. It's when they go on special teams or 4-on-4 four four that things go wrong. I have mentioned it in numerous videos at this point, but the fact that Newell Brown still has a job is concerning. The power play is static, and the fact that he's deploying the second unit more than the first is straight insanity at this point. Also, I don't know why I haven't figured this out yet, but Brown is also running late game decisions. Like they showed the Ducks bench with less than two minutes to go, and he is the one running the plays. So that explains why a fourth line grinder is out there to tie the game up. Don't get me wrong, I love Carrick, but the fact we keep relying on him in these situations is again insanity. You know what I just realized while editing this clip? Cronin looks hella confused. He is also wondering what Brown is doing. So maybe Beaker really likes Brown for some reason, because based on this, Cronin also thinks Brown is insane. Also, I don't think Brown is really crazy or insane or whatever. It's just the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. So I guess he is. You know what else this game was missing? Some Gouda's bite as he was out of this game because of a lower body injury from last game, because we can't go one game without someone getting hurt. The Ducks now have three days off before taking on one of the few teams lower than them in the standings in the San Jose Sharks, Saturday at 7 p.m. They will get to come home for a few days, so as of right now, I'm planning on live streaming Ducks practice tomorrow the 18th, start time 10.30ish to 11ish. It's been a bit, so looking forward to seeing you all there. If you like this video, go watch the most recent video I did on the cutter situation and how it's getting out of hand. It took a lot of time, so I would appreciate your thoughts on the video and let me know if you would like to see more like it. Thank you for watching and go Ducks!